let us be frank for those who can't catch on. The Sunni Muslim literature and the Shia Muslim literature, they refer to Muawiyah as a Khalifa. It took a lot of work by Muawiyah to have gained that title, which doesn't belong to him. He had to work very hard on equating Safin with Al Jamal because he wanted to enter into the company of Aisha and Al Talha and Al Zubair. He worked on that aggressively. And this you can only know when you go back to the source books whether they are history, whether they are seerah, whether they are fiqh, there are many references to unidentifiable sources. The words Jumhur al muslimin you will encounter in this literature, which means, like today, Muslim public opinion the Muslim masses. There is another word, Jumhur al-Sahaba, the public opinion of the Sahaba. And then you will find that word, Qalu, they said. This does not refer to any particular identifiable source. No one can come and just say, Jumhur al-Muslimi think this, or Jumhur al-Sahaba think this, or they said, Khan. These are frequent words that are used in this literature to try to put in credibility for a person now who is ruling as a king, but wants to get away with ruling as a Khalifa. They try, in this literature, they try to equate the reluctance of Muawiyah, the withholding of Muawiyah, his bay'ah from Al-Imam Ali. They try to equate that with Al-Imam Ali himself initially withholding his bay'ah from Abi Bakr, whether it was a matter of six days or whether it was a matter of six months. We're not going to go and become judgmental on how long that was. And both of these numbers are used there in this literature and everything in between. So they come and say, well, Muawiyah didn't give bay'ah to Al Imam Ali. And he, he wasn't, he wasn't um, the first one to act like this. Because if you think that there is a legitimacy or there is no precedent to what he did, look at what Imam Ali did. He didn't give a bay'ah, the bay'ah to begin with, to Abi Bakr. Yeah, but if you trail this logic, you can respond to it in at least a couple of ways. Eventually, an Imam Ali gave his allegiance to Abi Bakr. But it wasn't eventually that Muawiyah would give his allegiance to an Imam Ali. So the analogy doesn't work. It doesn't work now because we can look back at it and sort it out. But it worked for people, at least those first generations, to begin a public campaign that raised Muawiyah to the level of Khalifa. Another way of responding to this is that Imam Ali, for his own reasons for 
a short time period did not give the bay'ah or did not pay allegiance to Abi Bakr and he wasn't alone Sa'ad ibn Ubadah who is very well known among all Muslims without question for his status among the supporters of the Prophet and among the Ansar he also didn't give the bay'ah and he went on and finished his life without giving a bay'ah to Abi Bakr. So why doesn't the literature that wants to give legitimacy to Muawiyah as a Khalifa, why don't they dwell on Sa'ad ibn Ubadah? Why do they dwell on an Imam Ali to make their point? And the answer is simple. They want to try to draw legitimacy from the person who has it. And then confer it on a person who doesn't have it. Al-Imam Ali, when there were people who did not offer him the bay'ah, and they were very few, and they were on the opposing side. He didn't say or he didn't write into law that they are wanted, they are targeted, they are suspected, they are persons of interest, or they are enemies. None of that occurred. But what do we have occurring with a person who refuses to give his bay'ah to Muawiyah? He's there in that geography. He says, I I don't agree with you. I'm not going to pay allegiance to you as a leader. This person, Hajar ibn Adi, Muawiyah turns around and kills him. See, you have two different psychologies at work. And this is a a rupture and a break that was represented by the Umawi dynasty from the standards of the Khilafah. And look at the two opposing sides. During the time of the Khilafah, we had selfless Muslims. We didn't have opportunistic Muslims the way we have them after the Khilafah. Khalid ibn al-Walid, who was like the head of the joint chiefs of staff, the high-ranking general in today's language of the Islamic Armed Forces. Imagine, you're the highest-ranking individual in all the armed forces. Word comes down from the Medina to him at the war front, you are demoted. You are relieved of your high rank. Now, you're just a regular soldier. If, if we were looking at someone who's selfish, if we are looking at opportunism, if we are looking at someone who's trying to make political capital out of this, he would have gone around and tried to look for supporters against Umar who gave that order from al Medina. He didn't do anything. He went down. Came down from being the commander, from being the highest ranking military officer. He came down and he became a private. 